I'm Joshua Bardwell. I'm Cricket. We're gonna tune this quad today. I heard that they wanna have a bunch of pilots tune the same quad and see who tunes it the best. And I think we all know who that's gonna be. I think you. Or uh, Alex. I was thinking Alex. Yeah. This is the Rotorite HD1 frame and it is the Rotorite spec build with the DJI HD FPV system in it. And you know what that means. So we need to get rid of these. We right? gotta get rid of this old analog beat at, no, I'm just kidding, Fat Shark, I love you. So it's probably easier to tune from an HD system. I mean, we're gonna find out, I, maybe. I don't tune, so this is gonna be an experience. You're gonna just, you're gonna learn something. <laughs> Me particularly, I'm not big into tuning at all. Like I've never tuned a quad, I fly flight one, and you don't have to tune that stuff. But today, Barwell is gonna teach me how to tune a beta flight quad. Here's my dirty little secret. I don't do near as much pit tuning as I once did. And the reason for that is that modern quads, I'm sorry to say it's not just flight one. <laughs> they all, flight one, kiss, beta flight, they all fly better. You could debate which one flies the best, they all fly pretty damn good, even on the default. So why does everybody spend like multiple hours tuning quads and like, I got some the people, perfect tune? You know, some people really need just that last, let's say that the defaults will get you like an 80, 85% good tune, but then that last little 15%, it makes a big difference. you gotta work for it. You get great results without pit tuning. This, no. I got, I, I think because flight one is so good, that's because you're so good. Oh, oh. You could, you that, you just that good on the sticks. So does that matter as much as say you tune a quad out to your 90, your extra 15%, and then you wreck it into a concrete wall? Still flies, exactly. but is everything going to be, is that tune still well, going to be thing. relevant? And that's why a lot of pilots, especially freestyle pilots, don't really reach for that last nth degree of tuning. Because if you get that last little bit of tuning out, and then you bend a motor, it can change everything. Mm -hmm. And you, you aren't at that 99%. So, so maybe it's not even worth it. Maybe you want something a little more resilient. That's why I don't tune. Racers handle this by just building 10 of the yeah. exact same quad. They tune one of them and then they all fly the same. That makes sense. Well, here's what I do when I tune them. Let's see. The first thing I do is I start trying to tweak the filters. The goal with filters is to have the least amount of filters you can while still having the quad fly okay. Okay. You can tell you don't have enough filters when you got hot motors. If you if the quad tries to fly away to the moon, you, you need more filters. Okay. Every, every quad's gonna be a little different. But if you want just enough, but not too much. So we go to the pit tuning tab and then we'll go to the filter settings tab. And the good news is in Betaflight 4.1, they make it easier than ever. There's all these different settings that you could tweak, but mm. rather than trying to make you tweak each of them individually, there's just these filter sliders. And basically, as you move the filter sliders to the right, less you got filter. less filtering mm -hmm. and your quad flies better. How does it fly better? Mostly prop wash oscillation gets better. Now what's um, the difference between the gyro filtering and the D-term filtering? Most people should just move these two together. Okay. It's just lock them. Don't don't move to like gyro to, uh, to one and then de to the so other. The best, the same I'm thing. not even sure I could fully explain when you should tweak one versus the other. One of them is filtering the gyro data, which all, all the gyro data gets filtered, and then the gyro data goes to the P, the I, and the D term, mm -hmm. and then the D term gets additional filtering. Mm -hmm. I don't overthink it, and I think you get good results. You're gonna move these maybe one or two clicks to the right, so it starts at 1.0. We're gonna move them to 1.2. We're gonna fly the quad. Let's see what you got, Mr. Joshua. Any prop wash? You hear any prop I wash? I see anything. Here we go, ready? I saw a wobble yeah, there a at zero throttle. Yep. Are, are the motors hot or are they cool? Is the quad kind of making that rough sound in the motors or like a, a mm, oscillation? It just don't sound clean. Right. Any of that stuff means we gotta stop. Now do you tune it mostly off sound and feel? This, definitely. You can tune this with black box, mm -hmm. but there's another tool called PID Toolbox that lets you really dive deep. But at the end of the day, hot motors, yep. that's a sign you need to stop. The other thing you can do is you can do this tuning with a set of beat up props. That's gonna add additional right. vibration. And that way if you crash out into in the field, that way it won't change your, your tune up too much. Yeah. Gotcha. And you'll be safe. If you do this tune with clean props and you tune it to the edge, then when you try to fly a beat you up props, motor. you're gonna burn a motor. Gotcha. So I'm just gonna keep working these to the right and test fly in between each one. It does get wonky, you see that? Like I it saw gets a little like, wobble there. Yeah. yeah. Whenever you do. So Every maybe, quad yeah. is different. So I definitely saw a little bit of wobble. It could be because it's windy, the wind is blowing it around. It can be tuned a little further, I'm sure. I would say a little warm. Yeah. They're borderline hot. I agree. Okay. So here's the rule of thumb. If you pinch the motor, and it feels kind of hot, but you can keep pinching it, that's probably okay. If you pinch the motor and you go, ooh, 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 
that's probably too hot. And if you're like a work with your hands and you got calluses on your hands, or if you're a chef and you just got iron hands, use your lips. I know this sounds dumb, but your lips are really sensitive. Just touch the motor to your lips. I'm not gonna do that because the battery's plugged Again, in. Again, it's plugged in. <laughs> just touch the motor to your lips and- uh, And press the arm button. <laughs> and and you, then you can tell if it's too hot. Now you're gonna start getting warnings like this. Mm -hmm. May cause flyaways, motor damage. In my experience, all the quads I build, I can move the sliders all the way to the right and they fly fine. Now why is that? Why would that differ between you and someone else's quad? some of y'all building some janky <laughs> quads. <laughs> if you build a clean build with you know smooth motors, and you got all your screws tight, you got your flight controller soft mounted, it's all good. But if it's your first build and you're not building quite to that standard, you may have a mechanical problems in the quad, electrical problems in the mm -hmm. quad. So don't get too in depth into that if you're not sure about your build yet. Just keep working it to the right, one step at a time. When I build them, I feel pretty confident. So you get aggressive with it. I go all the way to the well, right. Well, also because you know what you're looking for. Yeah. yeah. So then you're not going to be able to move them all the way to the right until you go up here and enable expert mode. Uh, and and we're gonna, once we do that, we can keep going. And in fact, what I like to do is hit this gear and I will permanently enable expert mode so I just don't have to keep hitting that button. Don't do that at home, guys. I feel like, I've never really used beta flight, but I feel like that's cool for people that aren't really, know exactly what they're doing. They don't let you take it to that breaking point that we were talking about earlier. It really depends. It, just as long as you go slowly and don't just take those sliders all the way to the right all at once. You should be fine. You should be okay. Okay. Yep. It's way more stable now. So, okay, so we need a little oh, more stability. You see that though? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of wind out there. Good prop wash handling in the turns though, don't you think? Like you can barely hear any oscillation. Let's nope. see if the motors are hot. They're warmer. That's starting to get a little a little concerning. With a bent prop, you're burning a motor up. Yeah, that's, that's on the edge. The other thing you should do is when you do your test hover, right? So you move the sliders to the right, you save, you take it out, you go to take off. Don't just arm and jam the throttle, because then it could fly to the moon. Just ease into it. Ease into it. Safety so, first, people. So we work these sliders as far to the right as we can get them without getting hot motors, and then the quad's flying as pretty much as good as it can get. The other thing I'm gonna do, if I'm still having some prop wash oscillation that I need to solve, I'll go to the PID profile settings and I'll start working the D gains up a little bit. Okay. Maybe up by five at a time. Okay. You can do that with the sliders. Um, I'm not as big a fan of these sliders, because like, let's say I wanna raise the D gain. Well, the only actual way to do that is to raise this PD gain slider and then, and then move lower the PD balance. And it's like there's no slider that just says make the D gain higher. It's a little, it's a little Is there a reason for that? It's just how they did it. I'm sure it makes sense to somebody, but. Now, does that change in the expert mode? Nope, nope, that's all that's the same. All the the same. only difference is when you got expert mode off, you can't move the sliders quite as far. Okay, same thing on the other It's gonna side. limit you a little more with those sliders. That's pretty much how I tune most of my quads. I actually seldom end up touching the P, the I, and the D. I go through a lot of quads. I'm often, I'm testing this, I'm reviewing that. I only have a few quads that I build as like my personal. personal freestyle rig. But I need to be able to get good results on a wide variety of quads. Mm -hmm. And you can compensate for a lot of PID tune, and you, you probably do this, maybe you don't do it mid-consciously. You're flying around anything that you might experience 100%. with your fingers. Yep, 100%. So if you got a little bit of bounce back after a flip or roll, you can just be a little more gentle on the stick mm -hmm. and compensate for that. I think that's what it is. I think that since I've been flying the default tune so long that I already know where it's gonna give me issues at, mm -hmm. so I already know that. But if I fly somebody else's quad, like I think I flew Drew's quad, I was like, this thing flies amazing. We're gonna walk through everything that I do with my tune. Uh, PIDs, filters, everything that I customize to get the flight performance and handling that I want, as well as the feel that I want for my style of flying, which is a little more flowy and relaxed. So we got everything set up in the configuration page, mostly followed Bardwell's instructions for setting up 4.1 with RPM filtering on an F4 board. Uh, because it's an F4 board, you could overload the CPU, so we aren't maxing out the PID loops and the, the D-shot and all that. So rather than running 8K, 8K, we're only using four kilohertz on the gyro update frequency and four kilohertz on the PID loop frequency. And we're also only using D-shot 300. And with bi-directional D-shot turned on here and our ESCs updated to 32.7 or higher, we're gonna have access to 
RPM based filtering. The other things we need to do in the configuration is have dynamic filter turned on and later we'll also tune that down so that it's not kind of interfering with the RPM filter. Over in the filter settings tab, the most important thing that you want to do is turn on the gyro RPM filter because we already set up everything else in the configuration tab to support gyro RPM filter. And then you also want to change the parameters of the dynamic notch filters so that the RPM filter and the notch filter aren't kind of working in the same area. What, what the dynamic notch filter does is it's looking at the gyro signal and trying to detect noise and automatically and dynamically filter out that noise. The gyro RPM filter essentially does the same thing, but it knows the RPMs of the motor, so it's much more accurately and quickly able to detect and filter out the noise. It's way more effective. So you don't want the notch filter and the RPM filter I don't want to say interfering with each other, but working on the same area. There are sources of noise outside of the spinning motors. So what we'll do is we'll set up the dynamic notch filter to filter out the noise that's outside of the noise generated by the spinning motors. So the settings for the RPM filter and the dynamic notch filter pretty much got them from Joshua Bardwell. I think he got them from the Betaflight developers. I don't fully understand what they all do, but they work, they're tested, this is, this is what we recommend. So you wanna have a three in here for the gyro RPM harmonics number, a 100 for the minimum hertz that the gyro RPM filter will be operating on. For the dynamic notch filter, you want to select low, because those lower frequencies, that'll be outside of the higher frequency noise of the spinning motors. You want a zero in for the dynamic notch width percent, and that's going to disable a secondary dynamic notch filter. And then we do 200 for the notch Q and 90 for the dynamic notch minimum hertz. So no matter what else you're doing, I would put those settings in as is. And what you want to tune outside of that is going to be dependent on the aircraft you're flying and your own preferences. All right, we're gonna start off by flying the complete stock tune, so stock PIDs. So we are carrying a GoPro because we're gonna fly with a GoPro because if we're filming something, we want that higher quality recording. But some of the footage that we're gonna show you is gonna come from the DVR of the goggles so that you see exactly what we're seeing. So if we're reacting to a vibration or a bobble, you're seeing exactly that without, you know, any, without any chance of there being like hyper smooth or, or something not showing up in the GoPro. And it's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, nice. <laughs> what I'm noticing is that it, it feels like I've got a little bit of a bobble. Do you kind of see it? Yeah. Actually, it stops on it. it stops pretty good. Oh, okay. No, we're getting a little I bit need, of bounce I need back. Some, uh, I need some work. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to start off by raising the P value. Now what I'm feeling is like, I think it's an eye term thing I'm feeling. Like I'm feeling like a low frequency oscillation. As Betaflight continues to evolve, the developers continue to increase the effect of eye term while working on things in the background to try to reduce the negative sides of eye term. So eye term is how much the drone is going to resist outside forces like wind or center of gravity being off or whatever, right? So how stable it is, iTerm is going to have a big effect on that. So you might be thinking you just raise iTerm a lot, but that can make the quad feel really stiff. So with filters and things like feed forward, the developers are hoping to allow you to run very high iTerm and get that super stable quad without that stiff feeling. I personally think that the quad feels too stiff and that you get kind of weird flight artifacts. So I like to lower the I term. So we've got these sliders here for changing the values of the PID and feed forward terms. And as you move one, you can see all the numbers scale. And what's cool is that it's, it's essentially set up so that the numbers scale proportionally based on uh, what the developers think they should be. Previously, you would just have to type in each number individually, and if you do that here, like if I just put it 50, 65 here, see it takes away the sliders and it's kind of alerting you that, you know, hey, you're not keeping things proportionally balanced the way 
that we think that you should. You don't have to use the sliders. You can still just type in the numbers that you want if you think that you know what you're doing. But I like to use the sliders because I wanna put a little bit of trust in the proportions that are recommended, as well as it just makes tuning easier. It makes it easier to remember what I've set up. I just have to remember the positions of the sliders, so essentially remember four different numbers rather than remembering each number for each axis and each terms, which would be, a, what's that, 12 numbers up here that you used to have to remember? So the sliders make it very easy. Unfortunately, at this point, neither Betaflight on-screen display nor the DJI tuning interface gives you the sliders. It still just gives you each individual number. So it's great that you still can make adjustments in the field, but it's gonna mess up your sliders. However, if you do make an adjustment in the field and you end up with numbers that aren't what you would have gotten with the sliders, it disables the sliders as I showed you. So what I do if I'm out in the field and I absolutely have to make an adjustment in the goggles, I'll do that and then later I'll plug it into the computer and I'll take a shot of what those numbers were, reset it all to default, and then use the sliders to get it as close to those numbers as possible. So as you move the sliders, you can see how the different terms respond. I mentioned I like to lower the eye terms, and unfortunately, there's not a slider for eye term. I think, I think the Betaflight developers really don't want you messing with eye term the way that I like to, but you can still do it. But rather than just being able to lower the eye term directly, what you're gonna have to do is use the master multiplier slider to reduce the eye term to where you want it, which is then gonna bring everything down. So then you have to use these other sliders to bring them back up. So when I'm tuning for my style, the first thing that I'll do is I'll just reduce the master multiplier until I get the eye terms where I want them to be, maybe 0.6 or 0.7. And then I need to raise the P and the D terms back up. So then we can just use this P and D gain slider to raise those back up while leaving the eye terms as low as I wanted them to be. And then I might wanna think about if I want the proportions of P and D to shift because the P and D gain slider moves both of those up. And I do think that I want to have a little bit higher P relative to D from what they have at default. So I'm gonna also raise this slider. And then the last thing, stick response gain. Because I lowered the I term, you don't need as much of that feed forward. So I actually reduce the stick response, which might sound counterintuitive. Why wouldn't you just want the most responsive feeling quad? But I've just found that with my style where I want everything to be a little bit more mushy or loose, because I just want the drone to flow and move kind of gracefully, that's what I end up liking. The only other thing I would do in this area is the anti-gravity term. Anti-gravity, what it does is as you rapidly change throttle, it dynamically boosts the effect of eye term and what that can do is stop your quad from bobbling as you're moving the throttle. So if you've ever experienced moving the throttle abruptly and the quad is bouncing, anti-gravity is supposed to combat that. Because we've already lowered the effect of the eye term, you might want to increase the anti-gravity term, I usually put like seven or 7.5 there. That was good. Okay. I mean, you get it, what do you think? Right on, the, I mean, on the throttle blip, you, oh, come on, that's that good. good. Oh, you know a good one to do? That'll test prop wash of mm. any roll. Oh man, I'm still, still trying to get those down since you taught me them. <laughs> that looked pretty good. I, I'd call that good, I'm still, Feels like not quite locked in. I wonder if I want to go even lower on eye gains. Or maybe it's the filter. I rarely touch filters. Yeah. Most of the time I end up leaving filters stock. Maybe I want to decrease some of the filtering so we can tune the low pass filters. The higher you set your low pass filter, the less filtering that there is because everything lower than that number can pass through and be used as data. So if you want to increase your filtering, you reduce the number. So before we would type in numbers, but again, the newest version of Betaflight has these awesome sliders and you can just drag to have more filtering or less filtering. And then you can see that with more filtering, the numbers are going down 
and with less filtering, the numbers are going up. I like to reduce the filtering a bit, so we're going to reduce the low pass filters for both the gyro and the D-term, and it's generally recommended to just move the sliders together. So we're just gonna drop both of those down to this, so that the numbers say 1.3, and I found that to be enough filtering that if my quad's a little noisy because the props are a little dinged up or something's wearing out or whatever, I mean, you know, we're crashing out there in freestyle, I don't want to have to have the quad pristine to be able to fly well. I wanna be able to, you know, bump into something and still be able to keep going and keep going for the trick. So we wanna have some filtering, but not so much that we're getting prop wash and that the stick feel is reduced. And so that's a good compromise. In fact, you could even go a little bit less on a clean build and hey, here's where you start Start getting the getting the warning. Oh, I like this now. I lowered the eye gains a lot, and this is now flying the way I like it. Look at this. Look at this. That's smooth, dude. We're seeing the go. No, I'm really happy with this. Yes, I'm calling this. Oh yeah. No, I'm really happy with this tune. Now I get to tune a quad that's all banged up and garbage. Well, it's fine, it's fine. You know that's not fair It's either. fine, The it's quad fine. does not fly the same when your motors and everything it's are banged up. It's fine, look how smooth it's still flying. I'm really happy with how the quad is flying now. I think what I was struggling with the most was the default eye gain settings for the newer versions of Betaflight. I just think they're way too high. So we ended up tweaking everything. We raised the P's, we reduced the filtering, but we just, that was just a little bit. The biggest change was dumping those eye gains way down. For me, that's what helps it feel a lot better. What up guys, it's your boy Alex Vanover, AKA Captain Vanover in the house. So I've been not super impressed with all the tunes. I don't know, man, it looks almost the same to me, to be honest. You don't know, the wobbles are so much gone now. Cause it's over filtered probably. I've reduced the filter. You know what? I would love to see what you do. Just give the quad to me then. Put some fresh props on, give me the quad. I'm changing a bunch of crap on it. They haven't been very well rounded. They've had really good stick handling, but not so great prop wash or vice versa. Um, recently, in my personal beta flight experience, I've had a lot of trouble tuning, but I've been around some great people who have helped me get my quads to fly absolutely amazing. There's a lot of great information out there if you guys go on YouTube and search up Betaflight 4.1 tuning with the new RPM filters. I'm gonna show you my personal tuning setup and how I go about tuning this quad right here. I think you guys are gonna love the way this tune here flies over anything else. All right, so we're gonna connect here into Betaflight. This quad has not been set up. It's only been flashed with Betaflight 4.1. So before I do anything else, I'm just gonna go in here, select UART 3. These are all the uh, the settings for your receiver. If you guys are curious about what all this stuff means, there's a whole bunch of other videos out there explaining what all these things do for you guys. But we're gonna just kinda zip through this part really fast so we can show you guys the tuning process. Now with Betaflight 4.1, if you're gonna run RPM filtering, you have to have your ESCs updated to 30, uh, I believe it's the 32.7 ESC BL Holly 32 firmware. And also you don't really wanna run anything above D-Shot 300. Otherwise, there's a lot of motor or ESC signal noise in the quad. I'm not too certain about that, but I know Joshua Bardwell has a great video about that. So we're gonna select D-Shot 300, bi-directional D-Shot. The motor pulls, that's actually the number of magnets in the motor bell. Most of the time it's gonna be 14. So we're gonna leave that as is. Then we're gonna go over here. We don't need our barometer, barometer or magnetometer. We're also gonna select 4K, 4K. When you're running RPM filtering, it can't really run over 4K, so besides that, we're just gonna select SBUS, go down here, make sure air mode's on, OSD's on, anti-gravity and dynamic filtering are on. We're gonna hit save and reboot, and now we're gonna get to the good stuff, which is the PID tuning, so. So here's what everything looks like as stock. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my rates for you guys. If you're curious as to what the rates that I fly for both freestyle and racing, here they are right here. A lot of people don't actually understand that rates make a big impact on the way that your quadcopter actually flies. If you're really comfortable with your rates, you're gonna fly better, and oftentimes it's gonna allow you to fly around things like prop wash a lot easier, versus if you're not really in total control of the quad, it's gonna make flying around those things much, much more difficult. So I highly recommend fine-tuning the rates. They're super easy to do in beta flight because you can see the curve and everything like that. And here's all of our stock filters now. Gyro RPM filter is enabled. We're gonna leave everything as is. RPM filtering has come a long way in terms of beta flight. Beta flight in general is just flying better than ever. So the quads are gonna fly pretty good. If your quad does not fly well 
on stock PIDs. Like it may have some prop wash or some shakes and stuff like that. That's fine. But if your quad's making weird noises or just having weird issues, chances are your PIDs are not gonna fix those issues. Your quadcopter should fly perfectly fine as long as it is well built. So there was a few areas that I felt like needed tightening up. This is a really heavy quad. It's about 800 grams. And the pins in my opinion are a bit too low in beta flight for this type of setup. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, now I'm not gonna mess with these sliders. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing in the pids. I know all of these pids need to come up drastically. So we're not gonna make many changes. We're just gonna focus on our P gains right now. So roll is at 42. I know this needs to come up a lot for my personal experience. So we're gonna try 60 right there. We're also gonna go to pitch. With a quad like this, you have a GoPro and you have a LiPo battery. There's a lot of weight on the pitch axis when you're moving the quad versus on the roll axis. So in theory, your P gains on pitch should be much higher than they should be on your roll. So I'm gonna select 75 for that. Generally speaking, I want it to be about 10 to 15 percent, maybe 20 percent higher than my roll gains in a case like this. Yaw is one of those things that's up for debate. I personally like really, really high yaw pids. I don't feel like it affects the way the the quad itself handles. It just makes it a bit more locked in in big sweeping turns. And also, in my opinion, a lot of the prop wash that I've been seeming to get in Betaflight 4.1 is coming from my yaw axis. So I'm gonna drastically make a change here. I'm gonna go all the way up to 100 on my yaw P. And we're gonna save this right now. We're not gonna change anything else. Generally speaking, I don't recommend making too many changes at one point, but our P gains I know need to come up drastically before we mess with anything else. So we're gonna save that, we're gonna go out, we're gonna fly it right now. Wait, have you tuned this exact setup before? I have not actually. So wait, 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 wait. you just like went straight to the tune though. You like just did it all before you even flew it. Well, it's just because I know what is going to need to be changed having been tuning beta flight in general a lot recently. Feels really good. I mean, definitely feels a bit loose. I'm going to raise the idle up. That's how fast the motor's idle. Uh, it feels like when I go zero throttle, that's where I'm getting this really weird shake on this quad. And I saw Drew had it even when he his was fully tuned or whatever. So I'm going to try raising the idle a bit. Usually my idle is considered to be really high, but from a racing standpoint, I really like a high idle that seems to also help a lot with prop wash, kind of keep the motor spinning and not allowing you to kind of get so low on the throttle chain that when you pump the throttle, now you're starting to get those oscillations and everything that you get uh, with prop wash. So I'm going to raise the idle a bit. Let's do nine. An idle of nine? Yeah. That is so high. Oh yeah. A little bit of a prop wash there. I know how I can fix that though. Way better when I'm going over the trees though. There's still a little bit of a shake. Definitely some prop wash on the roll axis. Pitch looks pretty good. Sounds good too. You can definitely hear it even there when I just came in. So I'm just gonna raise roll P up just a bit more. We're gonna put that at 68. I'm gonna increase my pitch to 85. I feel like with the, all the weight on the pitch axis, it's still feeling a little bit sluggish there. We're gonna leave yaw just where it is. We're gonna start messing with our D gains. This is gonna help a lot with prop wash handling. If you guys are curious as to what these things do, like I said, in the new beta flight, you can literally highlight over the question mark and it's gonna tell you exactly what these things should do. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our D gains. Pitch, I feel like had a little bit of bounce back and also a little bit of prop wash. So we're gonna go ahead and crank that up to about 43. This is a number I've seen actually very common on Betaflight 4.1 tunes. And we're gonna crank up roll just a little bit too. We're gonna crank roll up to 38. If your D gains are too high, you will get hot motors. And when we start messing with the filtering, you're gonna see that it is really, really hard sometimes to keep your motors cool, especially when you're fine tuning a quad like this. So now we're gonna go to our I gains. I gains, integral gains really help in wind. Now, a good time to go tune eye gains is when you have a lot of wind. You can basically put the quad in an angle and see if it starts floating around a little bit. So, and they also help the quad feel either stiff or loose. So high eye gains are gonna make the quad feel really stiff on the controls, but help a lot in tracking and wind. Um, and then lower eye gains are gonna make the quad feel a bit more loose. In my opinion, I think the eye gains should try and be as low as possible. And sometimes you don't know what that feels like until you actually try it. So on the yaw axis, I'm gonna go ahead and increase it because I can definitely see a little bit of shimmering. Shimmering being where the quad is kind of drifting a little bit on the yaw axis and hard maneuvers. So we're gonna crank that up to about 115. And then my roll and pitch, they felt just a bit high. I'm, I'm used to flying lower eye gains on roll and pitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit out of the box here. I'm gonna try 65 and 70 for my roll and pitch eye games accordingly. I think that's gonna make the quad fly really good. Let's go try it right now. So there is some prop wash to fly around. What I'm doing there is I'm just forcing the quad 
into prop wash, flying it one direction, then immediately back the other direction. And that's how you're gonna be able to really see that prop wash. If you can get rid of it there, then it's gonna be really easy when you're actually flying the quad around. Way better. Now I'm seeing oh, some wow. prop wash on pitch. So that was more on pitch that time around. You are way better at seeing those things. Like, I didn't, when, as soon as you said that you saw prop wash on pitch, then I saw it, but before you said it, I wouldn't have even noticed it. Yep. So I think my pitch is gonna be a bit high as well, and so I'm gonna lower it. That's better, let's fly it around a little bit. It still is that weird shape. But it's actually better on the prop wash. I think I kind of helped with the prop wash bit of it, but now I'm gonna try changing the filters around to kind of remove that last bit of prop wash and try and fix the stick feel because it's not feeling right right now. So our pins are pretty much there, right? Let's go to our filter settings now. The best thing about 4.1 is the filtering. It's super easy to mess with filtering. Now, the best way I recommend you mess with the filtering is to just use these sliders right here. You drag them just a little bit over increments, just like that. You'll see it's making the changes automatically for you. I wouldn't necessarily recommend individually playing with these numbers yet. Just start dragging the sliders and see what that makes a difference on your quad. Generally speaking, if you have too low of filtering, it's gonna give you a warning. Now, in a case like that, you could arm your quad and it could take off. Quadcopters, some need a lot of filtering, some don't need a lot of filtering. The less filtering you have though, the quad is gonna fly much better because of that. So. I know this quad's pretty well built. Now, I watched a Joshua Barbell video where he talked about how you should set your gyro RPM filter harmonics number to one. Now, this is just one of those recommended settings that he has, and basically, as it reads here in the question mark, the number of harmonics per motor, a value of three, recommended for most, will generate three notch filters per motor, totaling the 36 notch filters, one at the base motor frequency and two at the harmonics. Barbell has a much better video explaining all this. I just recommend using his setting, turning it to one, seems to work a lot better. And as far, as far as the dynamic notch filters go, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in all of Joshua Barbell's recommended filters right now in the quad. Zero, 290 and low. I think guys with this tune right here, it's gonna fly absolutely amazing. I think the process is gonna be about done. There's only one way to really find out and that's to go fly the quad one last time, put a fresh battery on, fresh props, and let's see how this baby performs. That was our fit tuning episode. <laughs> Got it. No way. Yep. All right, we're master recovery. I gotta give him that. Is it <laughs> down? Gotta be good at something. I was flying around for a few seconds there. It definitely felt the best it had so far of those last two batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it as is. This needs a lot more you know time. How hot that motor is that you just roasted. Oof. I don't know, you were the Oof. one who roasted getting out of the tree. At least I got it out of the tree. So what do you think? Who was right? Who had the best tune? Me. Well, I mean, to be fair, I stole like half your settings. But besides that, I think my philosophy behind it everything was the yeah. best. I mean, you mean my philosophy? I mean, I learned from the best. Part of the reason I feel like my tuning philosophy works so well is because not only have I tuned freestyle quads, but I've tuned tons of race quads. I've seen all the ups, the downs, tried all the different firmwares, and I've learned from a lot of the best at the same time. And I don't really think anyone's right or wrong. A lot of tuning comes down to how you want the quad to feel for you. It's true that there is no absolutely objectively right or wrong way to tune. There are guys out there that will spend hours chasing a black box log, trying to get the lines to line up. That's fine. But at the end of the day, as long as you're happy with the footage you're getting out of your quad and the experience you're having while you're flying it, that's what really matters. There's one more thing I would say about this, and that is that a lot of times beginners get really wrapped up in trying to get the perfect fit tune. And I would say that as a, the defaults fly better than ever, no matter what you're flying. And a beginner would probably should be spending more time just learning to fly than worrying about pit tuning. And if you are gonna give a crack at pit tuning, we're gonna list all of our pits down below so you can get an idea of you know what's gonna fly well. But also with Betaflight 4.1, I mean, you can literally self teach yourself how to tune a quad. I mean, you have all the sliders there right for you. You can see immediately the difference it's gonna make on the quad. And you have those little question mark things that you highlight mm -hmm. your mouse over and it literally is telling you what this is gonna do when you increase it and what you should expect it to do. And I think that's super awesome. I think the future of FPV is here in terms of tuning. And I think pretty soon most people are gonna be able to tune a quad pretty much just like that. If you are a beginner and you're wondering when it's time to start thinking about pit tuning, I would say the first time you notice your quad doing something, 
and you go, oh, I don't like that. At, at the beginning, you could barely just get around the field without crashing. That's not when you should be thinking about tuning. But when you do that split S and the quad goes boom, 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 instead of settling, or when you're trying to go sharp around a turn and the quad's swinging wide, when you start to notice those things, that's when you should start thinking about pin tuning. We're all flying the exact same quad, the Rotorite HD1 build. And that means that if you have that exact same build, you could fly our pits. And we're gonna make our PID tunes available to you guys on the website, link in the video description. Like I'll have a tune for the Vanover motors with the Johnny FPV props. I know there will be a tune for Vortex's motors, Drew's motors. I mean, if yeah. you really build the specific setup, because it does make a bit of a difference when you change oh, voltage sure. and everything like that. For sure. So if you want our specific tunes, they're now available, which is awesome. You guys can get the same exact experience pretty much that we're getting. Big thanks to Hobbywind because the stack and our builds is super reliable and that gives me the confidence to go out there and push with my quads. I mean, I had so many problems throughout the last few years burning 4-in-1 ESCs and flight controllers and I finally found something that works super duper well that are 60 amp ESCs. It's pretty much bulletproof. Comment down below whose quad you think flew the best. And remember, if you pick Alex, he's actually flying my tune, so no, that's no, no, two no, votes no. for me. His filters, his filters slightly adjusted. Let us know what you think. Who flew the you best? You know it's me.